So we're about to head off to meet a um, friend to go to a Zeiss event. I think it's Zeiss. Yeah. Zeiss? Zeiss. Zeiss. Zeiss is nice. Let's go. Obviously I've come here today to meet with a friend. You might have seen him before, or maybe not, I don't know. Depends how many DRTV videos you've watched before. But yes, he's a friend of ours, and he's in the white Mini Cooper. Got it! What's up, Warren? What's up, guys? <laughs> Class, class parking from Scott Hay. Yeah. Last time we were on uh, DigiRev, it was the CP2. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna have them here too. Ooh. Stairs right at you. So this 21 to 100 was announced last year at IBC. Now it's not much of a new toy, but for us in Hong Kong, it's definitely something to brag about. Welcome to my cooking show. They're all, they've got like all these compact climbs, you've got the 2880, yeah, 2880? Yeah, that's great. And it's like the size of Scott's face. Oh man, that's brilliant. Um, but obviously these things are quite heavy, right? That's 3 kgs, that's the size, I mean that's the weight of Scott's newborn. But now they have this 21100, which is a whole kg lighter and it covers a wider focal length. That's right. I mean, in what cases would you use it, Scott, as well? When I'm traveling, um, I do a lot of documentary style shooting, so we're using tons of lenses, right? You've got the typical EF lenses, Damiang, and all those, and yeah. you, you know, it, it gets cumbersome because you're carrying quite a lot. And I like the whole idea of the 21100. It's like kind of almost a full range, mm -hmm. but you need like one wide angle. Otherwise, you know, it's. T 2.9, there is a drop when you zoom out or you zoom in, but that drop is so minimal yeah, it is. You, you, you can't even tell, like trust me, like it's pretty pretty damn good. So it, it's very smooth curve, oh, okay. so so unlike some other lens which holds the T-stop until the yeah, yeah, right. and then drops. Yeah, we, we don't do that, okay. so we keep it very smooth. F4, let me watch here. You can see the drop is like very minimal. The T stops are a very even spread from 2.9 all the way down to 22, as opposed to the CP2, where, well, you can see for yourself. And in terms of focus breathing, I actually couldn't notice any at all. I mean, Scott said he saw some, but I mean, it was minuscule. So overall, I was properly impressed by this lens. Put that on my FS5 or put that on a A7S, put it into one bag. Pretty much set to go, man. Yeah, perfect little rig. Yeah, yeah. And um, what other kind of uh, scenarios would you see other videographers use this thing? As well? I think even typically, as you see it right now, it's on the red. I mean, using it in a studio or shoot, commercial shoot, I think it's a pretty good lens. It's you know, like I said, takes the full, almost the full range. So that's all you would need to use. Save yourself some time. Don't need to switch in and out lenses. Now even though most of the hype is around that new Fujifilm Cine lens, I still think it's worth having a look and appreciating what Zeiss have made here. So of course this lens isn't for your everyday consumer, I mean, unless you have 10,000 US spare to just throw around. But if you do have budget to rent a lens, and don't want to rent maybe like 3-5 to five prime lenses, this is definitely worth considering for your small medium budget film, wherever it is. I think it's, a, it's quite a thing of beauty actually. Um, I think you need one. <laughs> I think I will need one. Kai needs one, Locke needs one, yeah. I need one. So that's four, four, four. four at least. So we can yeah. do a 360. Dan, Dan Chung with his pole. Yeah. yeah, and Dan, your Dan pole. Yeah, Dan's pole. We can do a 360, <laughs> 360 with a lightweight zoom. <laughs> I would just need four cameras. Yeah. 